Rub up your engines! Why does Ferrari sue its customers? Well, Ferrari has rules. It's such a snotty, snobbish company. You can't paint them a certain color. For instance, if you're Mary Kay, you cannot paint your Ferrari pink. A Swiss fashion designer, Philip Plein, he had the audacity of making advertisements to promote his brands where there was a Ferrari in the advertisement. So it ended up cost them $352,000 going to court. You also can't cover up any of the Ferrari badges. You have to leave them there because it's advertising. They like advertising themselves themselves, right? And you also can't do any modifications to the body or the engine. Hey, you buy this vehicle, can't even mess with it. I mean, what kind of an idiot would buy a car like this, you know? I mean, yes, they're snobs. I guess the snobs don't care. Well, I have a Ferrari. Oh, look at me. Yeah, look at you. You're really stupid. You wasted all that money on something. You can't even do what you want. Hey, this is America. You want to buy something? You should be able to do whatever you want with it after you buy it, right? But, oh, not Ferrari. They might sue you. They'll put you on a blacklist where you can't buy their Ferrari anymore. Well, way away, I'm not going to buy one anyways. They can put me at the top of their blacklist as far as I care. If you're thinking about buying a Ferrari and you want freedom, don't buy it. Buy something else, you know? <laughs> You don't see the Germans that way. You buy a Porsche or something, they don't care what color you paint it, what you do with it. Now, here's something to show you how bad Korean cars are and how their warranties are pretty much useless. William sent me this email. I have a 2014 Santa Fe Sport. At 65,000 miles, the engine short block assembly was replaced under warranty due to excessive oil consumption. The engine was replaced by Hyundai, but the spark plugs, catalytic converters, and oxygen sensors were not, and they were all fouled because it burned oil. Some warranty. Yeah, we replaced the short block, meaning they didn't even replace the whole engine. They only replaced the bottom part. They reused the heads over, right? That's bad enough, but it burned oil. It destroyed the catalytic converters, the oxygen sensors. He had to replace those under his own cost. He had to pay to replace the catalytic converters that were carboned up because if your car burns oil, guess what? The burnt oil ends up in the catalytic converters, and if you ever looked inside a catalytic converter, stick it to the sun. Go to an auto parts store. Say, let me look at a catalytic converter. Look at it through the sun. You see all these little honeycomb holes, right? Well, they all clog up with burnt oil. So he had to pay for all that stuff, even though they replaced the engine. Now, that is what I call a crappy company that really screws over their own clientele. They did replace his engine, but he had to pay for new catalytic converters and oxygen sensors because they were all coated with burnt oil. If you call that a warranty, that's why I say these warranties aren't worth the paper they're printed on. What a load of nonsense. It damaged the car and only replaced the engine, not everything else it damaged. You know what I say? Don't get involved in this crap. Don't buy a Hyundai in the first place. They're garbage mobiles. And then if they are fixed under warranty, they only fix them partially, not the whole thing. DM Sanders says, I got a choice between small SUVs. I'm looking to buy a small SUV. What do you think of a Chevy Captiva, a rebranded Saturn with 80,000 miles for eight grand or a Honda CRV with 80,000 miles for six grand? They're in relatively good shape. Which way would you lean? I wouldn't lean. I'd fall the whole way over for the Honda. The thing is, you are looking at used vehicles, right? So you got to find a guy like me, a professional mechanic who really knows this crap and have him check it out for you. You can't trust anybody selling vehicles for six or eight grand. People want a lot of money. That's a relatively low amount of money. I don't know what years they are, but if they only got 80,000 miles, that's not much mileage for a Japanese car anyways. For the Chevy, yeah, it might be falling apart, but not for the Honda. But they could be wrecked, flooded, stolen. You want that all checked out by a mechanic, and if he says it's good to go, you buy the vehicle. But keep this in mind. Always demand to see the title. There's so many people selling stolen cars, cars that don't have clean titles. Demand to see the title. If people can't show the title, walk away, because you can't trust people with that, but the Honda is so much better. You definitely want to get the Honda CRVs and the Rav 4s. Those are the two best ones out there. Carrot Man says, I just bought a junkyard engine. I bought a junkyard engine, a 1988 Ford 460 with 75,000 miles. It wasn't an RV that caught fire because of a cooking incident, and the engine's not burnt, but it's not in running condition. What should I do? I took off the valve covers. It's not sludgy. One, that's totally believable because it's an RV. So even though it's an 88, it's only got 76,000 miles. What you want to do is you want to take all the spark plugs out, put Marvel Mystery Oil on each one, let them soak a couple of days, then crank the engine over with a bar on the front, crank and turn it over four or five times to make sure the engine isn't locked up, right? Then I would change the oil and filter, put it in the vehicle, if it's not already in a vehicle, and 
Fire her up and see. Now you said, you know, it needs a new carburetor. So of course, buy a new carburetor. I would use an Edelbrock. I like the Edelbrocks and you can buy a brand new Edelbrock that'll fit that Ford 460 and they're great carburetors. Brand new. Don't even mess with rebuilt or whatever. Get a brand new one. You can price around, get a decent price on an Edelbrock carburetor. And then fire it up and away you go. Matt 129 says, I have a noisy differential in a 64 year old classic car I'm thinking about buying. I'm looking at a 60 Rambler cross country six cylinder their slant automatic tranny under 70,000 original miles. It winds in a differential. I think it's a failed pinion bearing. How can I make it last as long? Should I just pass on it? What do you really want to do with this thing? If it's a toy and you're going to drive it on weekends, I'd live with the noise. I'd change the differential fluid and I'd put a little bit of additives in there to make the differential last a little bit longer. There are a lot of good differential additives you can put in. Some of them have Teflon in them and it actually does work. And see what happens. Because the only thing you can really do is rebuild those things. Those are so old you're not going to find one in a junkyard. And the problem with rebuilding differentials is there's hardly anybody who knows how to do it anymore. Almost all cars are front wheel drive. They don't have differentials. Nobody knows how to rebuild them. The guy I knew who was a pro at rebuilding them, old Wainer in Houston, he's long dead. The company that he worked for is now a bunch of townhomes. They tore the place up and built townhomes there. So you're going to have a hard time finding anybody who can rebuild any differential and especially one on a 1960 Rambler. Now it depends on what you're paying for. Don't pay too much. It's not worth all that much money. But if you want a toy, put the additive, change the floor, drive it and see how long it lasts. You know, because it's going to be a real bear trying to find somebody who can rebuild that thing correctly. Now find an old guy, maybe a retired guy and he does it in spare time and he knows what he's doing. They're not that complex, the older ones, but it still is an art rebuilding the differential. You're off a few thousandths of an inch and pfft, away it goes. Well, John Deere just made an announcement about the future of their lawn equipment, right? And they say, and I quote, we want to serve our evolved customers. And you know what they're talking about? Going electric. They're trying to electrify. Well, of course, they would love it if everybody got rid of the one they already have that's gasoline and buy a brand new, more expensive electric one from them. The way it stands today, they said, well, how much can this mow? And they said, well, it can mow this much. And I'll say, well, you know, my yard is twice the size of that. Then they say, well, you can buy another battery pack, blah, blah, blah. I can mow the thing three times with the tank of gas. Why would I want to have to have two batteries to mow at once and pay thousands more for the stupid electric lawnmower, right? They're saying, oh, we'll evolve with our customers. We'll become electric, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, maybe for guys with tiny lawns. Now, I'll tell you, I had an electric lawnmower when I lived in Houston, right? But our backyard was stones and rocks and trees that we landscaped ourselves, right? You've probably seen pictures of it. And our front yard was a whopping 40 feet wide of grass and about 15 feet deep on one side. Then the other side had that gigantic Chinese Arbor Vita tree that took up that. So we're talking about a really tiny bit to mow. And I did have an electric lawnmower and a cord and it worked perfectly fine, right? <laughs> But you're not going to be mowing the old big old suburban lawns with an electric lawnmower, whether you got a battery or not, it costs more. It's not going to last all that long, right? But of course, John Deere says, we'll evolve with our customers. They would just love it if you had to get rid of all the stuff you already bought from them and have to buy brand new electric versions. I say, follow the money, follow the money. Well, the airlines are like, they think they're kings, no crap on their customers. Now, Frontier Airlines just started a new strict 60 minute check in cutoff. You can't check in after it's 60 minutes for takeoff time, a whole hour, right? I know they're trying to save money, cut costs. If you, you know, bring a calculator in, they'll charge you extra because it weighs more, you know? This is just, they're really pushing people around. Hey, if I don't have to fly, let me tell you, I won't. I will drive. I drive Tennessee, Rhode Island back and forth four times a year. I'm not going to be flying. They're obnoxious. They give me all these rules you gotta go by. It's your money. You know, vote with your money. Don't fly with these clowns. All the weird rules that they're coming up with. And now, well, what are they gonna say next? Well, if you don't check in at least two hours before, we'll give your seat to somebody else. And this new rule starts August 16th, 2023. So that's only a couple of weeks from when I'm recording this. And we'll see if people get furious or maybe they won't buy tickets from them anymore. Hey, it's a competitive world, right? And you know what I say? I say, as consumers, we should fight this. Don't fly Frontier Airline because they can have all the rules in the world, right? 
But if nobody flies with them, they will go bankrupt. It's the same thing, like I tell people. Don't buy a fiat car in the United States, right? They're junk. And if you don't buy them, they will pull out of the United States. And mark my word, they probably will pull out of the United States pretty soon. There's thousands of fiat dealers, and they ever selling two or three cars a year in each dealership. So you know they're going to pull out of the United States. And people at least here in the United States are smart enough, don't buy those fiats are crap. And away they go. Well, if Frontier wants to treat people like scum, well, guess what? Don't use them and they will go bankrupt. If nobody flies on their planes, they will lose money and they will go out of business. Maybe they'll come back to being friendly again. I kind of doubt it because they're screwing their workers over. They're hiring less people. One of the reasons they're doing this is so they can have less people at the airport to check people in so they can pay them less, right? Well, if they make it such a crappy experience, people won't fly with them anymore. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.